always feel so much better. <sighs> it does really feel so much better after getting rid of the deads. Hey, everyone, it's Team Adventurous. So we just did, before I went and got some new headphones, um, which I'm going to use right now. <laughs> oh, we're yeah. going to test them out live for all of you. Not live. So here's, here's a fun little thing. Um, the Cardonians... If that I believe I said that right. The uh, car uh, car dogs. Your car, yeah, man. I, I, I that that word. Yes. <laughs> Long way to go till I'm a lore master. <laughs> 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 uh, anyways, um, yeah, we were suggested to watch this thing from uh, Baltimore's Guide, and we I'll probably upload these one right after the other so that you guys can see man his thing was 58 minutes long and yes. i retained maybe like a shred or two of information about the carcaradons yes carcaradons and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to an australian explain it which will probably be much more succinct <laughs> and useful to me as I as I have a somewhat short attention span unless I'm like really, really engaged. We put silicon pack in my headphones. Oh my. It's okay. to improve the freshness. Beach headphones. <laughs> Real like they're edible headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, see, because the pads in the actual ear part are in fact made of cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Very comfy. Very comfy. Mm. And- I'm sorry, guys. I swear we're going to get to the reaction. We're going to do it. We will get to the reaction, I promise. Yes. Okay. Just put that aside. All right. G'day, guys and gal. Oh, that Space sound is chapters immaculate. In 40K often really like to lean on what they're yeah, chapters Lovely. Are. And you can hear the... You can uh-huh. hear the Raven Guard have beaked helmets, ultramarines are blue, and imperial fists like fisting. <laughs> and sharks, as I will now refer to them as to avoid the rage of greasy neckbeards who pull out their katanas and have a seizure every time I watch up the neck. Oh no! A whole nother level. They're literally <laughs> shape and form. Like you think space wolves are wolves because they have sharp teeth and violet chihuahuas. But when you see these guys... <laughs> Wow, I'm going to ring the shark alarm now because that's a shark. Um, we have shark alarms in Australia. I'm not sure if that's a common thing. As I'm working hard on the upcoming well, Hunger Adventures I mean... animated series, I don't have time to smash out lore videos at the moment. So thankfully, Sleepy Sack, a new lore channel for Warhammer, has stepped in to help me with this. Hi, everyone. Sleepy Sack here. I would like to give a massive, long, hard thank you to Major Kill for giving me <laughs> an opportunity to work with him. I'm quite new to the whole YouTube game. But I've been into 40k for years. I finally decided it was time to start creating videos for everyone to watch and hopefully enjoy. Sleepy Sack has shown a really great ability to edit videos way better than I ever could, so I appreciate him lending his expertise to this video. Link to his channel will be in the comments and description below, so if you enjoy this video, you'll probably enjoy his other ones as well. Today we'll discuss who the space sharks are and what their deal is. We'll also talk about exactly why they are literal sharks in space, as well as what they've been up to. <laughs> yeah. Before we get started, do you long-term guys remember a so... video where a company reached out to me and wanted to do a collaboration with me on creating a novel? And I was like, sure, as long as I don't have to write the whole thing, but I still make money, I'm in. Hence, <laughs> my fellow Warhammer nerds, as well as Agreg, to create Journeys Through Falodon, which now has a proper cover, website, and is soon to be published. It's got all the fun oh. parts of the fantasy setting, and it's a great read. Book will be live on Amazon on the 29th of July. Caitlin? Mm-hmm. Write, write it down. We're reviewing it. Okay. What is it? Okay, so a couple days from now, 
Journeys through Thaladon. Okay. Yep. The so Titan. we're going to have to read it and review it. We are going to read and review that. Yep. Okay. You ready? You good? Yeah, I got it. Oh, so if you're looking for something new yet familiar, like our much beloved deceased Warhammer fantasy, then there you go. Let's get into it. 10,000 years before the Necrons were awakening, before the Tower were being up at your weaves, and before the Elder was so <laughs> the solution to all their problems was attempt to awaken the God of Death, an oiled, muscly man with long flowing hair and extreme thrusting power lived on Earth. <laughs> Spent days frolicking with maidens, tending the fields, and preparing for galactic domination. Ha! You thought I was talking about Jesus for a second there, didn't you? Well, checkmate Christians, because I'm talking about the real Messiah, the God Okay, take okay. Let's just put that heresy in check right now, Major. <laughs> but Emperor of Mankind, this man, the Big E, knew that the galaxy was a big, scary place and that nothing short of an army of demigod super soldiers would cut it. Hence, he created 20 legions of demigod super soldiers with an even more powerful super soldier leading each legion called a Primarch. Tell him what those legions did, Sleepy. Well, if humanity was to survive against the endless threats posed by the forces of chaos, Xenos races, and even its own fragile nature, then a great deal of change was needed. With his new legions of super soldiers, the Emperor formulated a plan to bring errant worlds to imperial compliance, uniting them all under a single banner. This was known as the Great Crusade and was considered by many as the Golden Age of the Imperium. It acted as a catalyst which propelled humanity forwards, allowing them to unite and rebuild. Radical advancements in weapons technology were made, allowing the Space Marine Legions to be equipped with the tools befitting the Emperor's finest. The Space Marine Legions would form the core of the Emperor's mighty armies, supported by vast garrisons of Imperial Guard. These combined forces swept across the galaxy, conquering planet after planet, all under direct command of the Emperor himself. After achieving victory against the Orcs during the Ulana Crusade, the Emperor returned to Terra to begin work on his next project. He bestowed the title of Imperial War Master upon Horus, the Primarch of the Lunar Wolves, giving him full command over the Traitor. entirety of the Great Crusade, mm. including all of his brother Primarchs and their vast legions of space marines. This was going well until Horus thought it would be a good idea to sell his soul to the forces of hell and damn the galaxy to a war that mankind would never ever recover from. As a result of this, a lot of people died, including our glorious hawk boy as well as the bold man himself. The emperor ended up so disabled that he would make Stephen Hawking look like an Olympic pole vaulter as well. <laughs> <laughs> in common sense, broke up the Space Marine Legions into 1,000 man strong chapters to distribute the power of the Imperium more so that no one man would ever hold the power of a Space Marine Legion ever again. Over 10,000 years of dividing chapters, creating new successor ones, experimenting with Gene Seed and warp spaghetti, we ended up with a few. <laughs> Some of their weirdness can be explained by heresy, such as the Minotaurs being Iron Warrior successes or the Blood Ravens being Thousand Sun successes. But for the Space Sharks, it's still a bit of a mystery. The most prevalent theory is that Korax fucked a shark at some point, as the Space Sharks share a lot of similarities with the Raven Guard, such as being quiet little goth kids with black eyes. However, the fact that they are also sharks in power armor means that can't all be there is to it. The truth behind their origins is complicated and pretty irrelevant. It seems that they are exiled Raven Guard with gene seed mutations that, which make them sharky. They also seem to steal Night Lord's gene seed, hence making them somewhat hybrid, whilst also helping explain their intense love of blood and violence. To explain a space shark, we should first explain a shark. Sleepy Sack, take it away. A shark is a formidable predator, capable of rousing fear oldest. and awe like no other creature in the sea. Sharks have evolved into swift and deadly killing machines with mouths lined in multiple rows of serrated, spear-like teeth. When hunting, sharks specialize in lurking in the dark void of the ocean, ready to launch a vicious surprise attack on their prey mercilessly tearing them to shreds with rows of razor-sharp teeth. When in large groups, sharks have been known to attack their prey in wild feeding frenzies, sometimes even attacking their own in the blood-crazed mayhem. 
The scent of freshly spilled blood only serves to amplify the intensity of their attacks. That description is interchangeable with any shark, in space or not. Let me give you some examples. The space sharks reside as a roaming fleet in the deepest void of space, far from the Emperor's light, where they massacred threats to the Imperium many years before they would even be detected. They do not relish in ornaments or their ego as they wear plain, ancient patchwork power armor. They rarely ever see the Imperium or the Mechanicus. They have to repair and maintain their own equipment, some of which is dated back to the Horus Heresy. To recruit, they have something known as the Red Teeth, where they basically rock up to an Imperium. Jesus Christ, Major Kill. <laughs> what? It's time. You Australian fuck, the word is time. It's not teeth, you fucking down under get. Imperial world, kidnap all their prisoners and try to turn them into space sharks, with the success rate being super low and the mortality rate being super high. Which major kill? Isn't turning criminals into a start is a really bad idea? The Night Lords did this and they became massive douchebags. Shut your stupid retard mouth to me before <laughs> I put you in your underpants and unleash the space sharks upon you. The Night Lords were the result of giving <sighs> edge lord teens in juvie godlike weapons and powers with no discipline or stability. The space sharks were a result of the same type of kids being scared straight by giant disciplined sharks with cold, dead eyes. <laughs> the super high mortality rate of the initiates into the sharks also generally means none of the pathetic ones get through anyway. Then there's the gray teeth, which is when the space sharks encounter a forge world and give them super old technology and also other random shit floating around deep in void of space in exchange for new guns and toys. With these new guns, or should I say projectile melee weapons... See, okay, and here's an important... I just caught from watching Major Kill's video just now. I I just retain and process what the gray tithe is. Yeah. In other dudes' video, I don't even know if he explained the gray tithe, and if he did, it completely in way. Yeah, that. but that's because he did it in like way long form. There's there's that sometimes Caitlin succinct is best. <laughs> yes as the sharks prefer to be able to smell their enemies from three meters away as they blow them apart, the sharks do some serious damage. The space sharks were forgotten by the galaxy for thousands of years, as you know, there's a lot going on, so when a space marine chapter is never chatty in the first place, goes off into live in whoop whoop, the Imperium wasn't too bothered. <laughs> Each time, no one was sure what side they were on as they would arrive, massacre everyone with a tentacle or horn, and then return back to the darkness. They returned for Abaddon's seventh Black Crusade as the Blood Angels were getting clapped. The Space Sharks appeared out of nowhere and promptly embarrassed both the Cornite Berserkers as well as the Blood Angels, two groups known for melee savagery, as the Space Sharks completely emacerated the anal cavities of the Black Legion. <laughs> <laughs> and the Blood Angels had statues and honors erected for them, as no one knew who the Space Sharks were and just described it as if a large predatory beast had come and molested Abaddon. <laughs> now we all know the Night Lords are weaker enemies and undefended worlds, because, you know, they're a bunch of pussies. Hence, they got the surprise of their life when they began pillaging the Imperial world, which was also coincidentally the target of the Space Sharks' next red teeth. Well, needless to say, oh my God. the shark would beat a bat. Hence, the Night Lords felt fear as they were massacred, their leader killed, and their pillage ruined. When in combat, the space sharks love getting stuck into a fight. Out of all the space marine chapters, the space shark assaults are often the bloodiest. They carve their way through opponents wielding howling adamantium toothed weaponry. Due to their shark-like characteristics, they prefer weapons lined with rotating teeth, such as chain swords and chain axes. Even bolter weapons are adapted to fit small rotary saws. These particular close combat weapons allow the space sharks to inflict a savage amount of bloodshed upon their enemies. Now all good chapters are riddled with heresy and the space sharks are no different. In the void, <laughs> a whole lot other than darkness and tyranids. The space sharks destroyed countless splinter fleets, but knew they had to crush the nearby gene sealer cult to stop them from signaling out even more tyranids. To do this, they called in an ancient favor from the Ashen Claws, a renegade chapter and enemy of the Imperium. <sighs> With the favor called, they arrived at the heavily infested planet, which was a shrine world, and told everyone they weren't allowed to pray anymore. 
Now, telling a Jane Stiller infected shrine world that they aren't allowed to pray is like telling an American to wear a mask. It's just not going to go okay, down fuck peacefully. Off, Major Kill. Fortunately for the space sharks, peace was never an option. Bail Shah, captain of the Space Sharks Third Company, led a vicious assault against the countless hordes of gene stealers, but his forces were quickly overrun, surrounded on all sides by the seemingly endless tide of rending floors. The streets began to run red with blood and violence, and the members of the third company began to fall, one by one. The space sharks made a desperate last stand inside the stone walls of a nearby cathedral. However, the battle had gone according to plan. Bail Shah called forth the fury of the first company, the veteran Terminator squads, supported by an ancient contemptor pattern dreadnought. These heavily armored warriors plunged into the fray, shredding apart the foul inhuman creatures with hails of bolt of fire and lashes of close combat attacks. This powerful counterattack made short work of the gene stealers surrounding the cathedral. However, more and more swarmed the area by the minute. Now, I'm not big on exterminatuses, but when an entire planet is full of gene stealers, it's really not the worst option. The space sharks are not one to ruin a good fight though, so they relish the opportunity to wreck some noobs. Eventually, so many gene stealers died so quickly that the gene stealer patriarch emerged and was put down just as quickly. Even with the patriarch dead, there were still millions of angry gene stealers, hence it was only the arrival of the Ashen Claws was the four-armed freaks finally put down for good. By the time the Imperial forces arrived, the Ashen Claws and Space Sharks were long gone, and the planet was a smoking ruin full of dead gene stealers. Basically a fun melee version of an exterminatus. The Space Sharks have featured- <laughs> A fun melee version of an exterminatus. Right. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to the unfun version. Hey guys, you know, we could just like, you know, lodge a couple super nukes and be done with it. But you know what I think would be more fun? You know what I think would be more fun, guys? What? If we go down there and hack and slash all 15 billion of them by hand. Yeah. Bet, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd be on board. Get the ship ready. <laughs> well, I mean, because, you know, why? Why just do it? Why do it remotely when you can turn it into, you know, a, a good time for physical activity? Oh, you know, just, you know, casualties on your side? Eh, I mean, <laughs> occupational hazard. Because <laughs> they distinguished themselves in the Badab War, an imperial civil war between the United <laughs> chapters. Help me out with this one, Sleepy. The Space Sharks' first involvement in the Badab War began as their strike cruisers arrived to bolster the Loyalist cause against the civil uprising. They were initially unrecognized by many of the Loyalist forces, as their operational activities had always remained shrouded in mystery. They were eventually accepted into the battle lines after cautious investigations of their intentions. The Space Sharks were deployed to a territory controlled by the Mantis Warriors in the Endymion Cluster. Their mission was simple, the complete destruction of any planet within the cluster that was known to contain forces of Mantis Warriors. This brutal action drew the Mantis warriors out, forcing them to abandon their hit-and-run tactics and return to protect their worlds from further casualties. Another notable contribution of the Space Sharks took place on Badab Primaris, during the final battle of the Badab War. The planet was the homeworld of the renegade Astral Claws chapter. The powerful atomic and geothermal reactors which provided power to the colossal hive cities and planetary defense guns on Badab Primaris were identified as a prime target. The Space Sharks sent in incursion forces who successfully sabotaged the reactors. The resulting catastrophic explosion shook the very foundations of the planet. Shockwaves radiated through the tectonic plates, opening up vast chasms that engulfed entire sections of the city. Plumes of molten lava began to spew from the surface as the entire planet collapsed on itself. Following this, the Space Sharks fleet returned to the Endymion Cluster to harvest new recruits to replace those that had fallen in the bloody conflicts. After receiving their payment in blood, they departed back into the darkness of the outer void. 
Now you might be like, Major Kill, I'm still not convinced these guys are genuine sharks. Well, let me finally put your concerns to rest. Space shark librarians have two special unique abilities. One is called From the Depths, where they flood the enemy's mind with the sensation of drowning, and the other one is called Rending More, where they summon an avatar of a shark to kill their enemies. As space sharks age, their skin turns grey and rubbery, like a shark. They also progressively get demented, being uptight, merciless, and eventually so antisocial that they basically just wander off by themselves and kill bad guys until they die. <laughs> shark. So not as bad as becoming... <laughs> Vampire, nor a furry, but still not super high on the idealio scale. The space sharks are also incredibly silent yet violent. The kind of guy to sneak up on you, and instead of breaking your neck or choking you, they instantly give away their element of surprise by performing a Mortal Kombat fatality on you that may or may not involve you getting bitten. Just like Ooh. a shark. Their yeah. preferences for traveling <laughs> is also a reference to a shark traveling in deep waters. The only chapter I can think of that displays this level of ruthlessness and efficient hunting and killing are the Retributors from Astartes, which a lot of you guys drew comparisons with on my Retributors video. They wear unmarked basic armor, don't autistically screech before charging at the enemy, and they get <laughs> done. I made a point recently that having the Minotaurs on your bad side was one of the worst things that could happen to you in the entire galaxy, but I genuinely believe having the Space Sharks against you might be even worse. You'll see the Minotaurs coming from a mile off, you'll know exactly the moment that a staring Malok shoves his spear up your ass. <laughs> the space <laughs> will arrive until the day they're in front of you for the split second before you're torn in half. Mm. Overall, another dope-ass chapter that shows why there are a lot of people that think loyalists are way cooler than traitors. And that does us for today, guys. The lore, origins, and sharkiness of the space sharks. Massive thank you to Sleepy Sack. Without him, this video would not be possible as I literally don't have the time to make it with the animation in full swing. So him editing this video is a massive favor to me and you guys. No problem, Major Kill. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to say thank you again for giving me this awesome opportunity. Ooh, have to check this out. Right, right. That's what we're doing right now. Ah. It's just turned from a reaction to an investigation. Investigation. Sleepy Sack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's called Sleepy Sack because it's the sack you hit people with to make them go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was not a euphemism. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. Mm. He, has, he has lots of things on here. I wouldn't say lots, but he definitely has a, a decent library content built up. Yeah. And it looks like mm. looks like it might be worth checking out some of his content. Yes. He does, he does them in short little bursts too. So we will mm -hmm. react to his stuff. Sleepy sack. We are coming for you. But like yeah. but like in the best possible way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not, not like, not like the space sharks. Not like the space sharks. <laughs> All right, everyone. This has been Team Adventurous. My new headphones are great, by the way. Yeah. <laughs>